Hello, welcome to another episode of the Cisco U. My name is Rafael Levo Ochoa. VPN has become a very predominant technology. Not only do we use it for our road warriors that go all over the world and use it for either remote work or for them to actually sell something for a company or do all kinds of other different things, we also use it in order to make sure that we're secure in areas that are typically not secure, such as a coffee shop, an airport, or even a library that provides free Wi-Fi. But let's be honest, some of us really don't think about that when we go to those particular areas, like a coffee shop, library, or even an airport, you know, where you have that free Wi-Fi. You automatically assume that you're gonna have some sort of security. And the reality is you don't. So in order to provide that secure connectivity, to provide that tunnel, kind of like this pipe that you use here for your plumbing, we need to have a way in order to secure infrastructure using VPN. So today we're gonna to show you how to do that using the FMC in order to create that VPN policy that you need and also use the Icebox in order to provide the authentication and also the authorization that is needed. In order to configure a VPN policy to work with the Icebox, we need to follow three steps. On the first step, we're gonna be configuring a new VPN policy on the FMC. We will then proceed to the Icebox and configure an authentication configuration that will allow VPN users to be verified and be given the proper policy and restrictions. On step number two, we'll be configuring a NAT configuration and access control policy configuration in order to allow VPN traffic to go through. And on step number three, we will verify the results using the login. In order to configure a VPN policy on the FMC, there are some tasks that we need to complete first in order for it to be successful. So the first thing we need to do is go into the FMC dashboard, select objects, object management, and on the left panel, we are going to add a new AAA server configuration under the RADIUS server groups. As you can see, I already have a device already added for the RADIUS server, which is the Icebox. If we edit this, you will see that I have the general parameters of the name of the actual server group name, and also the IP address of the PSN, which happens to be the Icebox. If I select the pencil icon right below, you will see that I have a, uh, the IP, we have the password that we're gonna be using to verify ourselves to the PSN and other general options. Once that's complete, we can then move on to the address pool. The address pool is essentially used in order for us to assign IP address to our VPN clients as they log in. This is how we differentiate these clients from one another. As you can see, I've already added a range of IP addresses that I want to use in order to assign to those particular clients. In addition to that, you will also need to go into the VPN options menu and then select any connect file. You need to make sure to upload an AnyConnect file that you want to use as a general image for every single VPN client that is attempting to connect. We want to make sure that we have consistency. So this gives us a way that we have a consistent client that we're using across the board. I've already uploaded a client by selecting Add AnyConnect File. And this is how I uploaded it by selecting the Browse key. And under the file type, I selected AnyConnect Client Image to make sure that that's the image that I want to use for my AnyConnect configuration. Once this is complete, the next step that needs to be done is you need to configure a NAT configuration. That could be done by selecting the devices, NAT, and then in your current NAT configuration, let's just say that you already have a NAT configuration policy. All you need to do is edit it by selecting the pencil icon, and what I did in my particular case is I just added an additional rule. As you can see here at the top where I have highlighted, I added an additional rule to make sure that when my VPN clients are trying to access the headquarters servers, that whatever VPN IP address pools I have selected as part of my pool of addresses that I wanna reserve for VPN clients when they connect and they get assigned, that those particular IP addresses are able to reach the headquarters servers without being translated. 
So this particular net rule is very important in order to make that happen. So if we edit that, you will see that I have some general options already set up for this rule. As you can see, I have it set up as a manual NAT rule, so that way it gets processed first. As you can see, I selected NAT rule before, which means it gets placed at the top. I selected the interfaces that they're gonna be crossing between the inside zone where the servers are located and the outside zone where the VPN clients are gonna be connected. And then under translate, I make sure that I keep the original IP addresses for the HQ clients and also the VPN addresses, and I translate them back to themselves. As you can see on the translated side, I'm making sure that I translate back the headquarters servers back to themselves and also the VPN IPs. So that way there's no translation when it's going through the VPN tunnel, making sure that it's successful when it goes through. Once I'm done with this configuration, if I make any modifications, obviously I'm gonna save this. And then once we're done, we are now ready to configure a VPN policy. To do this, we go under devices. We select the remote access VPN option under VPN. And we're gonna create a new VPN policy by selecting add. Once we select the add option, we will give this policy a name. We're gonna call it FTD VPN. We're gonna uncheck the IPsec uh, Ike version two. Since we're not gonna be using that protocol, we're only gonna be using SSL or TLS. We're then gonna select what devices we want to configure VPN on. So if you have several firepower devices that you wanna configure VPN on, and they're part of the same FMC configuration, you can select them all from this list. But since we only have one, we're gonna select that one and then click on next. Once we're done configuring those options, we're gonna configure a corporate um, connection profile. We're gonna call it corp profile. And one of the things we're gonna do as part of this corporate porf, uh, profile that we're configuring is select the ice box as our authentication, authorization, and accounting server. When we proceed to the bottom, we can also select the pool of addresses that we want to assign these VPN clients. Once we're done with that, at the bottom, we can then either choose to use a default group policy or we can configure a custom one. We're going to configure a custom one by selecting the plus option and then giving it a name. We're going to call it VPN-group. We're going to uncheck uh, IPsec Ike version 2. On the pool of addresses, we're gonna make sure that the pool of addresses that we have configured is the one that we're gonna be using for this group. We're also gonna configure a custom banner. We're just gonna put a very basic message. We can also add a DNS server that we want to use for DNS resolution. In this case, I'm choosing Active Directory. And then we're gonna go ahead and save. As you can see, we now are using that group policy on the menu option. The next piece is selecting the AnyConnect client that you wanna use as a standard client. Since we have already uploaded that, we're gonna select that as well. And then from there, we're gonna be selecting what interface we want to use to terminate the VPN connections. Obviously, we want to use the outside zone interface, which is the outside interface of the FTD that connects to the internet. And then a certificate that we've created for the HTTPS verification options. Then when we click on next, we will verify our config and then finish. Once we are finished, we will then deploy the configuration to our FTD and then test this connection right afterwards. Once the VPN policy has been completed and deployed, we can now move on to testing the VPN client configuration to make sure that it works. So what we'll do is we'll go over to a client that has the AnyConnect client already connected. As you can see, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the name of the outside interface that I've added to a DNS server. In this case, it's called ftd.lab.public. I connect and I then log in. As you can see, I'm gonna log in as employee one. I'm gonna enter my password. 
As you can see, there's the message that I created, hello to the network. And it now establishes a VPN connection. So if I try to access, for example, the servers, like the Active Directory server, I'm able to ping it without any problems. And I'm also able to ping the other device. Now, how do I control what devices I'm able to access? Well, what we can do is we can go to our ICE box, because remember, we're using that for authentication. So here we're in our Icebox dashboard. If we go into the sandwich menu, select policies, and then select results under policy elements, and select authorization, and select authorization profile, we are using this particular authorization profile for our authorization rule called EMPL underscore AVP. As you can see, this sends an access accept. However, if you go to the bottom, you will see that we have a downloadable ACL that we've selected, which is called EMPL underscore ACL. If we go over to downloadable ACLs and we select that, you will see that that is just a broad open IP any any. However, what if we want to limit this? What if I only want users to be able to ping only one device? What if it happens to be the icebox? I created a new downloadable ACL, as you can see right here, called only underscore ice. And as you can see, I've added a permit statement that only allows me to ping dot 22 on the 182.168.20 network, which happens to be the ice box. If I want to go ahead and switch this over, all I need to do is go back into this authorization profile and select the new downloadable ACL, which is only ice and apply it. If we go over to our policy and select policy set, as you can see, I do have a policy set for VPN. And if I go over to the greater than symbol and go to authorization policy, you will see that the first rule on the top, it's called AD employee, will go ahead and apply that particular authorization. So if I go back to that client and I disconnect and then reconnect now using the new authorization that I just created. What happens now if I try to ping 22, it works because I'm authorized to do that. However, if I ping the other IP, which in this case happens to be uh, 24, it doesn't work because I'm not authorized to ping that. Now, from the perspective of the firepower device, so if we attempt to log into the device just to see what happened, We can issue the show VPN dash session command any connect. And as you can see, there, there's really nothing here that will show us the restriction that we pushed out from the PSN. As you can see, there's really no indication here, even at the bottom, that we pushed out any restrictions. But if we issue the command show access list, pipe sign include, and we type in, for example, ACS. You will see the downloadable ACL that we pushed out. As you can see, we called it ICE only. So this is the ACL that we're using in order to restrict access. As you can see, we already have four hits because of the ICMP message that we sent out. So this is how we can better control the network and provide security to users. 
who are trying to access the network from an unsecure location. As you can see, creating a VPN policy on the FMC is very vital in order to not only secure the infrastructure from any type of eavesdropping, but also make sure that wherever the user may be, whether it be home, the library, or at a coffee shop, or at the airport, that none of his activity is able to be visible by any of the people that are using the same service. And also using the icebox in order to provide that secure authentication and authorization that the user needs to access resources. Hopefully this was informative and I will see you in the next video.